All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Do you know what really worship is? Worship is not to have a, a nice singer song or sing along or whatever you want to call it session. Worship is when your spirit man connects with the spirit of God. That's true worship. It's not how many times we jump up and down and how many times we fall in church and how many all of these funny goodies and things is, is happening in the church. It's not, that's, not, that's not worship and that's not church. Church is when your spirit man connects to the Holy Spirit. And, your, and the Holy Spirit conveys to the Father what you are really all about inside. Gerard, I'm a bit loud for myself. Please just turn me a little bit down. Thank you. Amen. So true worship, it's all about your spirit connecting with the Father. It's not this tingling, tingling, tingling. It's not what it's all about. Do you know what's the best worship session that you can ever have? It's not opening your mouth at all. And just lay before the Father on your flat, on your, on your stomach or on your back, and just... Let your spirit connect to him. You don't say a word. And let the Holy Spirit convey what you are inside, what you want to tell him about him. Let the Holy Spirit convey that to him. Let me tell you, quickly you will find out how quickly the room will be filled with his presence. And the Holy Spirit will just come in and it just hovers over you. It's like, man, that's the best session you can ever have. So if you, if you want to have long prayer sessions, don't pray at all. Just lie, on the, just, be, just lie flat before him and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I want to minister to you this morning about, I don't know why the Holy Spirit spoke to me this whole week about this, but I want to speak to you about hearing the voice of God this morning. Hearing the voice of the Father. And I want you to open your word for me this morning on the book of Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel, first, the book of 1 cha Samuel chapter 3. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 3. And he says, and he's speaking about Samuel. Eh? He says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and, or Eli, and the word of the Lord was previous, uh, uh, precious in the days, in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of, the, of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And here, uh, then that the Lord called unto Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. I want you to understand what he says here. He says, The Lord called unto Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. But he did not know that it was God calling him. Listen to what he did. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for thou hast callest me. And he said, I call not, lay down again. And he went and laid down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli. And he said, here I am, for thou hast called me. Or, uh, that called me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Listen to what he said here. He says, Samuel, I want you to understand this. I want to start at verse number one again. He says, and, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. What does it mean? It means that Samuel served God before Eli. You, you're with me. So that means Samuel was the child of God. But listen to what he says here in, 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 in chapter seven, in verse seven. He says, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. You got it? 
Although he served God, he did not know God. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Now Eli, strike, it strike Eli and says, but if it wasn't me calling him, then God must be calling this child. Now he says, therefore Eli said unto Samuel, go lay down and it shall be. If he, listen to what he says, he says, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, speak Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called at, uh, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, thy servant heareth. Speak, thy servant heareth. How many times, we, okay, let's, let's start in the beginning. How many of us serve God, but we don't know God? You have heard about a God that you are supposedly to serve, that you are supposedly to worship, that you are supposedly to pray to, but you don't know this God. Let me give you an example. May I use you as an example, Doc? You and the auntie. Now, Doc and Tani Madeleine is now married for? Now you must calculate. Huh? 49 years. All right. That's a long span. Okay. When Jimmy Swaggart and his wife was married last week, I think 62 years. All right. Do you think Doc knows his wife after 49 years? Should, no, it should be. Am I right, Doc? She can be anywhere in town, and if she speaks, his ears will go, that's my wife. Am I right? How does it happen to be like that? That he knows when she speaks. She, he knows her voice. He knows in a crowd, he will know his voice, the voice of his wife. Why? Because he spent time getting to know this missus that he married. Did it happen overnight? Definitely not. But the more time he spent with her, the more he got to know her. This, you know, we all got geite. You know what's a geite? It's something like you, what do you, what do you call it in English? What's a geite? Huh? Now we're not a habit. A geit. Uh, Fimis, what's... Otto, help me here. Nonsense. Is that the right word? Okay, let's use nonsense. We all got some nonsense in us. Huh? Issues. Zulu shoes. Issues. All right. We all have Zulu squinkies, you know. Issues. Ne? <laughs> and as Doc and Tani Marlene grew older... They discovered one another's issues. So he knows certain things he's not allowed to do because this, the wife will react in this way. Am I right, Doc? All right. You see, we think we can get to know God when we give our hearts and life to Jesus the moment or the date that you gave your life to Jesus, you are all about it. You are the wisest man and woman in the world. Some of us is walking with the Bible every single day. Do we live it? No. Do we seek it? No. We just like to be known walking around with the Bible. Some of us has got a ministry of convicting people all over the world. Because we think it's our job to convict people. It's not your job. I've got news for you. Bad news. It's not your job. Your job is to be, the Bible says he's calling you a sower. All you have to do is sow the seed. 
It's not your job to convict people of, of sin or righteousness and judgment. It's the Holy Spirit's job. So it's not your job to convict people about their sin. When you see people, it's not your job to rebuke them. It's not your job to correct them. It's not your job at all. But the church owned the, the position of we will be the correctors. We are not the correctors. We are the sowers. We are supposed to sow love. We are supposed to sow acceptance. We are supposed to sow Jesus loves you. Come. Let, let, we are supposed to draw the people unto Jesus. And de- let me tell you, definitely if you're not going to draw people with love, you're not going to g- draw them with rebuke. You're not going to draw them with a cane or the rod. You're not going to draw them. You are not going to draw them into your church or into your life if you're always rebuking people. But with love. Now we want to say, but we know the Father because we gave our life to Jesus. We don't. I doubt it if there's... No, I'm not even doubting it. I know it. There's not one human in this world or ever in the existence of the world that will know the Father all, uh, in, in all in one. We can never know the Father. But the more time we spend in His Word, the more time we spend in His presence, the more He will reveal of Himself to us. And the more we spend time in His presence, we will get to know His voice. We will get to know that when He speaks, we will hear and notice, but this voice I know. This voice I can trust. This voice I can follow. But we think... We think we know God. And we have got the right to do whatever we want with others and to others. Because we are the righteous. Get me, let me bring you down to your, from your throne again. We are not the righteous. We have got the righteousness of Jesus, but we are not righteous ourselves. You're still human. You still have mistakes. You still got issues. And as long as you're in this world and as long as you're in this fleshly body, you will, you will wear Zulu shoes. You will have issues to sort out the rest of your life. If you think you overcame the one issue, the next issue will at your, be, be at your front door. Now, let me not ask that question. Maybe I will be in trouble. Okay, let me ask a general question for those who are married. Does your wife or your husband have only one issue or is there plenty? You see, what I'm saying is the one issue will be just dealt with and sorted out and then the next will be at the front door to knock on the door and say, here I am. And you start the process once again from the beginning. Now with God, He reveals not issues, but He reveals His love, His who He is, His character. And let me tell you, have you ever tried to live the Bible to the T? Have you tried it? It's very difficult. Very difficult to come when he comes and he says, you must love your, not your neighbor, your enemy. You're like, what? Pray for your enemy. <sighs> no. I want, I'm not going to pray for my enemy. I want him to go away, vanish. Then the word of God says, but he died for him as well or for her as well. You have to love them. Because they must also be saved. Maybe they can be saved through your actions, through the love that you sow. If they want to what? You sow love. You see, if you can look through the eyes of the Lord, and how does Jesus look at us? He looks at us, all of us. When he looks at us, he just sees a bunch of people or a, a, a vessel with all these buttons. He, he knows every button you have. We call them boils, you know, boil. But swear. Places this one and then you act again. And Satan likes to push the buttons. And all we do is just react. You see, if you can look through the eyes of Jesus and you can see someone with some with as a, as someone who's a, a person with just a bunch of boils, you will treat them differently. Let me give you a quick uh, a vision that the Lord gave me a couple of years ago. I was, I was in this uh, discussion with the Lord regarding, uh, re- regarding marriage and marriage counseling and marriage, this and that, all of, all of the things that pertain, pertains with marriage. And the Lord showed me a, 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 a vision. And for those of you who are married, listen now closely. 
It might help you if you just take this this morning. All of a sudden, I see this black and white movie, and I see a guy at this point of the, of the, of, of the was, it was a guy, but it could also be a woman in the, in, in the bed who's sick. And here's the nurse coming in with a tray of food. And the next moment, but I, it's a silent movie. I don't hear anything. It's silent. The next moment, this guy in bed whacks this tray of food out of this nurse's hand, and it's just food everywhere. And she turns around, she picks everything up, and she walks out the door, and there's the movie stopped. And I said to the Lord, uh, I don't understand. What are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? And again, I see the same thing. And, but the Lord is quiet. He doesn't speak. And the, the movie is also quiet. I don't hear. So I don't understand. And the third time I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me, show me? And he said to me, look at her face. And I'm like, okay. And here's the movie playing again. And I look at the face, and I see she picks up everything with a smile, and like, I'm like, okay. And the Lord said to me this. He says, oh, and the next, oh, sorry. And then the, the next moment I see the movie, the next day, the, she's coming, she's doing exactly the same thing, but now she puts the plate in front of him and he eats with no reaction. And I said, Lord, I don't understand. And he says, this is what's happening with you, with you, with the human race. The one day you are not fine, the next day you are fine. So what happens? He says, when she, move, when she walks into, this, into the room the first time, and he, he whacks this plate of food, or he claps his food out of, her head, out of her hand, she looks at him with a smile because she knows he's hurting. She didn't take it personal that he's attacking her. She knew that he was hurting. That's why she could pick everything up with a smile, go out and bring another plate of food. Because she didn't take it personally. Because she knew he was hurting. And she was prepared to do whatever it takes for him to be healed again. For him to feel okay again. The next day, he was better. So she gave him the food he eats. So this is vice versa. Man in the bed, woman in the bed. Doesn't matter. This is for a marriage. So when your wife or when your husband reacts... Don't look at it as a personal attack. Looks at he or her, she, she's hurting or he's hurting. And whatever you have to do to get him, him or her better, that's what you have to do. Because that's what we call care. That's what we call service. Let's come back. In every circumstance you are, you have to get to know God. The Lord is at this, in that same picture is for us, is the same. We are in bed and the Holy Spirit is the nurse. Comes to you and sometimes, who of you, who of you haven't blamed God? Now I want to see the holy, the holy ones. I want to see the holy ones now. Who of you haven't blamed God for anything in life? Oh, I see. There's no holy ones. You, 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 you get to know where I'm going. We are in bed. We whack the food out of his hands because we are feeling. He turns around with a smile. It's not him, it's us. But he's prepared to come back to serve us again, to look after us, to care for us. That's one of his characteristics. It's when we get to know the Lord, spend time in his presence. But you see, life happens to such a degree that we are getting bombarded, especially in the, in the modern time that we are living in, we are getting bombarded with all sorts of noises from the outside world. Society and lifestyle, and this is what the world expects of you, and the pressure of the world. And, but God speaks, and we can't hear Him, because all of this, this noise is going on around us. And this is what I want to tell you this morning. You have to get to a place and a point in your life where you, where you will have to push away everything out of your mind and out of your spirit to, to say, Lord, here I am. Speak to me. Speak and open your ears. But you can't open your ears if you, if you don't know him, if you don't know his voice. Maybe God is speaking to you for a long while. Maybe he's speaking for you for a long time. He's speaking to you and speaking to you and speaking to you, but you don't hear him because all the clutter and all the noises in your mind and in, in, in society is going around you and you don't hear him because you, 
You're not focused on him. You must seek him to get to know him. You must spend time in his presence to start knowing his voice. When we're ministering prophetically, people always ask me, how do you know this? Easy. I just listen. I just hear his voice. How can I tell you something about your life if I don't know it? It's only by him. Because he knows you better than you yourself. But you need to start getting to the place where you start seeking him and say, Lord, I will, I'm prepared to push anything and everything out of the way to get to know your voice. Let me tell you, society and the world as we know it, we are going in, we are, no, no, we're not going. We are there. We are in the funnel. You know what's a funnel? A trechter. Not at the, at the big spot. We are in the front. That thin nozzle, we are there. This is where we are in, in, in God's watch. We are in the last. And if you're not going to start knowing God's voice now, in the end, you will not know to, what to say, how to say, and where to say. If you don't know and listen to what he says. Do you know why we are making mistakes in life? Because we don't know his voice. We don't, need, no, we, we don't ask him. We don't listen to him. We're not interested to what he has to say. That's why we go ahead and we make mistakes and then we regret it afterwards. Because we, don't, we are not being... Okay, put the scripture on the board for me. He says, be led by the Spirit. Do you know that scripture? Have you, have you read it? If you be led by the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Do you know that scripture? Now, to be led by the Spirit of God, you have to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. If he says left, you have to go left. If he says right, you have to go right. But you can't follow and live by the Spirit if you don't hear his voice. Why are so many pastors go off the track? Why is there so many prophets prophesying false? Why is there so many people in church that's not actually saved? They think they are saved, but they're not saved. We think if we come to church and we sit here and we sing nice songs and we read our Bible and we say a 10-second prayer, we are saved. We, you're not. I've got bad news for you. You're not. The Bible says, it's not him that says, Lord, Lord. That will inherit eternal life. But he that's doing the will of my Father. To be able to do the will of the Father, you must know and hear his voice. To sit in church is nothing. Like Joyce Meyer said, you can sleep in the garage for, for the next 50 years, you won't change into a car. You can sit for the 100 years here, you won't change into a, a child of God. Please don't call them a Christian. There's Christians just everywhere. And they are false, they are liars, they are cheaters, they are thieves, they are robbers. That's, the, that's Christians. Child of God means you have got a relationship with the Father. You hear His voice. And you, only you can decide for yourself if you want to be a child of God or if you want to be a Christian. You decide. You're either inside the house or outside the house. If you're a child, you're living inside. A Christian is a friend, he's outside. But you determine your relationship with the Father. And let me tell you, let, let no preacher tell you differently. If you don't have a relationship, you don't have the Father. You don't have the Son. The Bible said so. If you're not listening and following the Holy Spirit, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, you are going to be lost. It's time that the church should wake up. It's not about this box here. It's definitely not about this box. We can close this box, actually, because Jesus is not in the box. He's not a genie. Jesus either lives here or he lives nowhere. So to be able to hear the voice of God in this life, you would need to start get to, go and to, 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 to get to know all the clutter in your life and to start getting rid of it, to make room. What does Paul say? He says, less of me and more of you. How, I, how is that going to be possible? It is because I can get rid of the clutter in my life and start focusing on Jesus. Let me give you another holy cow of the church. 
We've been taught to follow the, Christ, the, the cross and to bring people to the cross and bring your troubles to the cross and lay by the cross. Why are you at the cross? The cross is empty. My Jesus lives, sitting at the right hand of the Father. It's not following the cross, it's following Jesus. It's not following a symbol, but it's following Jesus. If you're going to stay at the cross, you're going to, it, you, you're going to stay at death, because that's where the cross ends, at death. If you follow Jesus, you will have life. It's not about the cross, it's about Jesus. It's about the man who hung on the cross. That's him that we have to focus on. And if you listen to the voice of God, you have to follow Jesus. You have to belong to Jesus. Jesus has to reign in your life completely. You have to surrender all of this unto him and say, Lord, whatever you ask, I will. You see, too much of us, of the church, when I say us, the church, wants to have our own will, our own thing, and our own dream, and our own vision. No, no. If you give your life to Jesus, you are becoming bankrupt. It's all about him now, not about you. What does he want for your life? Where does he want to go with you? What is his plans, his visions, his dreams for your life? Not what you want. I'm sure if I'm going to ask who wants to be like a Billy Graham or a, a Jimmy Swagger or a Reinhard Bonker, everybody's hands will go up. But let me tell you something. Those men were willing to lay down their life, to sacrifice their life unto the Lord. It's not what I can be, it's what he can be through me. And let me tell you, if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to live through you, you will reach heights that you will never be able to reach with your own life, with your own dreams, your own visions. Because God, my God that I serve, will exalt you to places and heights that you can never dream or imagine. He will open doors that was closed for you forever, but he will open them. But you need to listen to his voice. Lord, here I am. What did Samuel say? Lord, here I am. Speak. I'm listening. Are you listening? Are you interested in what God has to say to you? Are you, open, are you opening your ears to say, Lord, I am acceptable to your word, to your spirit. Tell me. Or are you trying to run away from him because you are hiding things in your life? Because that's what we are trying to do. We don't want to hear God because he's always pinpointing things in our life that we need to get rid of. And that's so. Yet, again, I want to say, yet we sing these songs and says, oh, you're the potter and I'm the clay. And as soon as God starts molding and making me and then I'm like, I'm like performing. No, this is not what I signed up for. This can't be. Oh, yes, it is. And you know what? He's just answering your prayer. If he starts removing all the impurities from your life, you requested it. Through a song that you sang, you say, Lord, here I am. I'm the clay. You're the potter. Mold me and make me. And then he's starting to mold you. And you're like, ooh. What's happening? I lose my job and I'm like, why are you letting this happen? No, no, I'm just forming you. I've got something better for you. Oh, Lord, I've lost this. Yes, I've got something better. You see, that's the, that is the most, oh, how will I describe this? This is the most amazing road with the Lord. Is you don't have to worry. Whatever you lose, be happy because something better comes. He will never take something away and not giving you better. And whenever he takes something away, it's because he doesn't approve of it. But let me tell you, when he adds something, it's just blessing on blessing. And please, when I say blessing, I'm not talking about ching ching, all right? Ching ching is not blessing. God's blessings is much more than ching ching. God's blessing reaches far, far what, what money can't afford. Let me take you to a millionaire lying on his deathbed and let his money save him. Can't. My God's blessings is all over me. My finances, my health, who I am, where I go, everything, because I'm in his picture, not my picture. I'm living what he wants me to live. He opens the doors and he closes doors that he wants to open and close. I'm not crying anymore. But why does, no, I'm, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're closing this door because something, you're protecting me from something here. Then he'll open another door and then we'll go through and we'll have the blessings of the Father. Why are, you, why are you stressing? Why are you worrying if he can be in control? It's simple. It's so simple. 
if you just listen and trust. But you see, we're not getting taught by the church anymore that we have to have faith in God. Faith is out of the window. I can almost say faith is out of the, from the devil. Because if you trust God, who dares to trust God? Oh, yes, you must. You can. Because when you trust him, man, it is a life of abundance. And listen to me. If, you, if, I, if I speak of abundance, you must understand we are following the teaching also of the Bible that says don't gather for you in this world, but gather for you in, the, in, in heaven. Please, so don't, don't go with, it, with me with that. We need souls. That's what we can take with us. No money, no cars, no hands, no houses, no fancy things can go with us. But we can save people and take them with. Listen to the voice of God. Why doesn't God heal you? I have to listen to the Lord. When you're ready to receive the healing, he will give you the healing. There's a man that laid for 38 years next to the bath of Bethesda, and he didn't get healed. And the Lord sent, or the Father sent Jesus to save or to heal this one man. He didn't heal all of the people there. He said he healed this one man because this one man now was ready for his healing. Are you expecting God to appear in your life? Are you expecting God to take control? Are you asking him to take control? Or are you scared? Because you don't know which direction he will go. Let me tell you, the journey with the Lord is exciting. It's so exciting. Man, that's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Man, you can be happy in the darkest of days. You can rejoice. You can be, and then they ask you, why are you so happy? You know, in your circumstances, no, definitely not. But I'm happy that my God, the God that I serve, is in control. It might look dark to you, my friend, but he's still in control. Why am I worrying? You know, he's in control. I'm not worrying. Because the church is not living the word of God. We're not listening to the voice of the Father. And we don't definitely don't know our Father that we serve. But we want to pray. That, our Father which are in heaven. You don't even know him. You're not even spending time to know him. But you want him to take you to his heaven. And you want him to prepare for you and to, 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 to provide for you. He wants you. You want him to heal you, to protect you, to serve. You want everything from him, but you're not even willing to spend time in his presence to get to know him. Who he really is. What he's really about. He's not about this life. He's about the next. This life is just a journey that we have to go through and grab some souls that you can and take them with you. Let me tell you, it's not... Giving a piece of bread to someone that's changing their life is giving them the gospel and that, they, uh, that will change their life. Giving some, someone a piece of bread or, or 50 rand or 100 rand is nothing. But we are getting comfort. We, give, we, we are giving something. You, you're not giving anything. You, 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 you're just mocking yourself. You're just smooching your, your, own, your own image. I, I gave something, you know. Like can't say I didn't give. Oh, yes, you didn't give nothing in any case because it didn't make an impact. When you give Jesus, Jesus makes an impact. That's what we have to do. The church is supposed to be an impact in this world, but we're not. Because we're all wrapped up in our own little world. Because we don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why in some churches the Holy Spirit is not even present anymore. Because he, he withdrew because they're not willing to listen. They're not willing to listen. There's three major Preachers in the world that confessed a couple of months ago now that God doesn't trust us with his anointing anymore. Major, major preachers, major ones. Because why? They made their whole ministry about that box, about money. God took his anointing and said, I am not going to trust you with it anymore. If you want to be the first, I said to someone this morning, if you want to be something in the kingdom of God, Jesus says, you have to become nothing. The scripture of the Bible that says, humble be your, yourself in James. He said, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And at the right appropriate time, he will exalt you. So if you want to become the minister, become the servant. If you want to become the preacher, go and clean the toilets. Go and sweep the floor. Then you will become something in the kingdom of God. Don't grow a big head. We're not walking around with images. Nobody's got an image. Nobody. We're all with our flat feet on the flat earth. 
all together, same. There's no one, not one, no, no preacher, no teacher is above you. We're all on the same ground. But we all have to listen. We all have to listen. It's not for this man in the front that needs to listen. You have to listen there in your inner room. You have to go and close the door behind you. Say, Lord, I want to spend time with you. I want to get to know you. Reveal who you are to me. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to listen. I want your voice to speak to me. You know, my, many of our, and we call it this fancy name, we call it quiet time. I don't know why it's quiet. Because the Lord must speak to you. It's not quiet time. But with your, in the time with your relationship with the Father, when you close the door, you need to tell Him what's in you. And then you need to shut up and say, Lord, speak to me. S reveal and speak to me. And there's various ways that he can speak to you. You can open your word. Let me give you an example out of my own life. A couple of years ago, many years ago actually, I was so angry with God, you can't believe it. If that little Afrikaans Bible of mine could tell you stories, he would have told you how he flew over the floor. He slided over the floor. That's how I mad was. That I threw the Bible, I said, to the, I said to the Father, I said, you're my God, but you're definitely not my Father. Because my dad will not do these things to me. I was, I was, you don't know, I was above myself. Out of myself, actually. And listen to what I said to him. I said, you're my God, but you're not my dad. Put Psalm 2, verse eight, uh, 7 and 8 for me on the board, please, Andre. I went and I, after I went for counseling, a friend of mine said, come sit with me. And we went through the whole thing. And I sat next the morning next to his a duck dam. And I sat, I sat there. And I opened that Bible, and this is what God said to me. He says, I will de declare the de decree. The Lord said unto me, Thou art my son. He says, This day I have begotten thee. Remember what I said to him? You're my God, but you're not, you're not my dad. That morning he said to me, you are my son. You are my son. He changed my whole world that morning. I was alone there next to a duck dam on a plot. And he said to me, you are my son. I'm your dad. Today, I've begotten you. Let me tell you, if you hear his voice, your life will be so much easier. If you follow his word and his teaching and what the Holy Spirit tried to direct you with, your life will be so much easier because he will, he will, you will, he will lead you to avoid the trouble in life. He will guide your footsteps. He will order your footsteps. But are you prepared to listen to say, Lord, here I am. Your servant is listening. Are you prepared to do so? I want you to close your eyes for one moment and I want you to think, allow the Holy Spirit this morning to say, Lord, show me. Because it's His job to convict you of sin, righteousness and judgment. It's not my job. I'm here to give you the message and it's His job to show you the errors in your life. He's there to show you the errors of your life. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. And if I ask you these questions and you can say no, I want you to stand right where you are. Stand up right where you are. If you are there, that you're doubting if you've got a relationship with the Father. You've got a religion. And you call yourself a Christian. But you've never became a son and daughter of the Most High. You see, John 1 verse 12 says, for, those, for all of those who accepted Christ, He's given them the authority to be called sons of the Most High. You have to decide this morning 
And only you can decide that. I can't decide it for you. Nobody can decide it for you. Have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you ever asked him to become the master, the savior, and the king of your life? Have you ever confessed your sin? Say, Lord, I'm, I'm lost without you. John 1, verse, 1 John 1 verse, uh, verse 9 says, If you confess your sins, he is true and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Have you ever done that? Did you become born again or did you just follow a religion? Can you say, Lord, your servant is listening? Did you become that servant? And maybe you are like Samuel. God speaks and he speaks and he speaks, but you don't, you don't hear him. You hear the voice, but you're acting wrong. You're running to the wrong persons to, to ask that you speak. No, God is speaking to you. Maybe you don't hear his voice. Maybe you don't know his voice. If you don't know his voice this morning, I need you to stand right where you are if you don't know his voice yet. Please, everybody keep their eyes closed. I don't want people to look around. This is not a time to look around. Thank you for those who are standing. So I understand that everybody who's sitting knows the voice of the Father. You can hear his voice. Everybody has got a personal relationship with the Father. In your quiet time, you speak to him and he listens. Now I want to ask you a question. When you pray, do you believe God hears you? Or do you know he hears you? And before you answer that, be, 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 be careful when you answer, before you answer. Because if you say, I know he, he answers, then you need to prove to me that he answers. When you pray, you need to prove to me that your God answers your prayer. If you can't this morning, I want you to stand and say, Lord, I need a relationship with you. Because only through a relationship, I will get to know your voice. I will get to know your voice. I will get to know your voice. Everybody finished? So I presume everybody who's sitting has got a relationship, can hear the voice of the Father, and God answers your prayer when you, when you pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace, your kindness, your mercy. I pray for each one who's standing this morning. Each one. Everyone who's watching us through on the internet. Each one, Lord, you know exactly but them by name. I pray this morning. Number one. That you will hear their prayer. When they say, I need Jesus. I need the Father. And I need the Holy Spirit to take a hold and to take control over my life. I'm done with the past. I'm done with the past. And my future needs to belong to Jesus. Whatever I've done wrong in the past, we confess. We say, Lord, forgive us. Cleanse us, wash us, but also set us free. Pray this morning, Lord Jesus, that each one can say this morning that here is your servant, Lord, speak. This morning, Father, I want to come in the name of Jesus Christ and I want to silence every voice that these people are hearing. Every voice I command in the name of Jesus Christ. Every voice. To be silent. I struck you with dumbness and numbness. 
you will not be able to speak to the children of God anymore. I command you to be silent. Father, I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will come and assist each one to get rid of the clutter in their lives. The things that's bringing division between you and them. Clutter that they cannot hear your voice. Clutter that they can't follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Can't make decisions, the right ones. But getting influenced by other people, by other things. I pray this morning, Lord, let the Holy Spirit will come and break down every shelter, every object, every wall, every pillar, every altar that Satan got it right to build in our lives. His kingdom will be destroyed by the power of your spirit in these people's lives this morning. I declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the clutter will be removed from their lives according to what they believe and they want to let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you'll give them the desire, the ability, and the, the yearning for your holiness, for your greatness, for your spirit, for your power, to hear your voice, to be guided by your voice, to be led by your spirit. Everything that is standing in their ways, I pray this morning, Father, let your spirit break and rule in that area. In Jesus' name. I therefore pray this morning, Father, I ask that your spirit, I ask that for your spirit, that it will be revealed unto us. In Jesus' name. I pray this morning, Father, let your spirit will take a hold and take control. Of each one, of everyone who's standing before you this morning. And whatever Satan has on them, against them, that he might think he's got rulership, he's got ownership. I pray this morning, Father, let your spirit break. Let your spirit break through your power. And there's no power greater than the power of my, of my Father's Spirit. Let your Spirit break the power and the hold on their lives. I come this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by your power and by the power of your Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon, every principality to stand aside, to bow these knees before the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says every knee will bow before your name. Therefore, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that your spirit will start controlling these people's lives, their minds, their innermost man, their, even their subconscious, where Satan lies to them. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name that you will cleanse them with your blood, the blood of the Lamb, that you'll break the yokes off their shoulders, off their minds, of their subconscious, over all of them. And that the Holy Spirit will do me, have dominion over every area of their lives. Father, I say in Jesus' name, be, let everyone be filled with a peace that will go above all understanding. And let everyone who's worrying through the trouble of Satan, through the ideas, the paintings, and the lies of Satan, all of that will be quiet now. And I pray that their faith, their shield of faith will be risen 
will rise up against the evil works of Satan. And whenever the attacks come, that the shield of faith will be protecting them against every fiery dart that will be shot at them or that will, be, that will come against them. Father, I pray now for liberty, freedom. I pray for liberty and freedom to take a hold. And let the light of my Jesus drive away all the fear, all the anxiety. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory, all the praises, all the adoration. Because everything belongs to you. All the glory, all the praises, all the adoration. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your working, wonderful working power in our lives. Thank you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Glory to Jesus. Just allow the Holy Spirit, His presence to move. Let's just sit before Him, allow Him to move as He wants. For you are glorious.